Street signs are all around us. They show us where to go, and they keep us safe, but they rarely delight us. Street signs aren't supposed to make the world more beautiful. But once upon a time, in San Francisco, one sign did just that. It's the year 1938, and San Francisco says to itself, hey, next year's the Golden Gate International Exposition. Millions of new people are about to hang out with us. We have to find a way to show them all the architecture, the natural beauty, and the other old-timey things our city has to offer. So they come up with a picturesque 50-mile route that visitors can drive at their leisure. But then somebody stands up and says, you know what people remember about San Francisco? 1849, that gold rush, 49ers, the thing we're gonna name a football team someday. We should call it 49 Mile Scenic Drive. Everyone agrees, and the signs for 49 Mile Scenic Drive go up later that year. But they won't be up for long. Around that time, a young man stands outside the Alamo selling tiles he's painted by hand. His name is Rex May, and he likes to make things. He serves as an artist in the army. He goes to art school in New York. To get by, he sells hand-painted greeting cards. He meets a guy named Chuck. Chuck introduces Rex to screen printing, and they start making cards together. Chuck convinces Rex to move to San Francisco, and in 1954, Rex opens the paper to discover that 49 Mile Scenic Drive has been rerouted, and there's a contest to design a new sign. So Rex sits down and makes this. The city likes it. The old sign comes down, Rex's sign goes up, and he wins $100. Today, not many people take the 49 Mile Scenic Drive, but that sign is a San Francisco icon. Just look at that seagull. What a handsome gull. You just want to drive around the city together, look at some architecture, see some natural beauty, maybe even get a burrito afterward. And for decades, if one of Rex's signs was faded or stolen, the city would just put up a new one. But at some point, they started replacing these signs with this. Uh, what? That's not Rex's sign. That is not our seagull. <laughs> Let's compare. Rex's sign on the left versus the redesign on the right. Rex's sign is classic. His lines are clean and his details are delightful. Rex illustrated all of this type by hand. It is perfectly aligned and uses the space well. The redesign, however, is awkward. It's full of uncomfortable angles. And what is this extra nostril about? This type has no personality. It uses the space poorly. And why are the I and the V so close together? So why was it changed? Nobody seems to know. Not the people who put it up, not the people who manufactured it, not even the SFMTA who ordered it. What we do know is that this isn't the end of Rex's story. After the signs hit the street, Rex and Chuck keep making cards. Their small print shop slowly transforms into a legendary Christmas store. Rex travels the world. He develops a soft spot for Mexico. There, he buys ornaments for the store and collects folk art for himself. The figures here are made in Celaya, Mexico, and they're baby rattles. The paintings are mostly from Mexico, various artists that I was lucky enough to meet down there. And oh, this is sort of interesting. This is a automaton, a, a music box. It plays a tune and it moves.
This is the 49 mile uh, scenic drive uh, sign. There's 250 of them about the city. And I'm happy to say that this is 1991 and the sign is, is still up. Two years later, Rex passed away. Not long after, his signs began to disappear. Chuck asked the city to keep Rex's sign on the streets, but no one listened. By the time we came along with this project, over half had been replaced by the redesign. But Chuck wasn't ready to give up. He got some friends together and started a letter-writing campaign. One of those letters got a brief mention in the San Francisco Chronicles op-ed section. Hello? Hi, this is the SFMTA Sign Shop. We read that op-ed in the Chronicle and we want to bring back Rex's sign. Everyone wants to make it right. So the SFMTA sends their best designer over to Chuck's place to examine his enamel edition from 1954. Then the team gets to work. And here is Rex's sign, back where it belongs. Nothing lasts forever. But thanks to everyone we met along the way, Rex's seagull has one more chance to soar over the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> 